Welcome to NTN Nightly, I am Janelle Novel. This edition's top stories. The Prime Minister of St. Lucia talks economic recovery as the featured speaker on the United Nations e-conference series. Government of St. Lucia to launch an economic recovery and resilience plan. And donations made in an effort to build St. Lucia's resilience against natural disasters. The United Nations on Friday hosted its e-conference series, Consultation for Action, Private Sector for the COVID-19 Response. Feature Speaker Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chasney indicated that the COVID-19 pandemic has placed the Caribbean region in a peculiar situation, presenting not only a health crisis but an economic crisis as well. The Prime Minister explained that while the region has made progress in adjusting to the new norm and coexisting with the virus, it now has to face the economic crisis. Honorable Shastri noted some of the initiatives that must be taken to respond to the crisis at hand. So here is it we're having to borrow monies to make up for tax revenue shortfalls, as well as now having to increase the expenditures of government where everything says that you're supposed to contract but you need to play a role in, in stimulating your local economy. And we've seen on an immediate basis that construction, maybe the ICT sector, um, and then hopefully down the road, the development of our small businesses. But how are our small businesses going to get off the ground when they themselves have seen a significant loss of market and revenue? Um, the banks themselves now, while very liquid, um, are giving moratoriums and their balance sheets by the end of this year are going to look very bad and therefore the amount of, of revenue or, or, or investments that they're willing to make are going to be curtailed by their confidence in the economy being able to grow and the genuine growth of our economies is only going to happen in a significant way when we are able to open up our global markets. The Prime Minister noted that while efforts have been made to reopen the borders to benefit from the tourism industry, the government continues to weigh in on the best possible protocols such as testing. He explained that testing in the United States of America, for example, is not readily available. As such, discussions have been moved to the possibility of having tourists tested upon arrival. Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney noted that there are many benefits to be had from the tourism industry. He also disclosed some of the initiatives to come on stream as the country responds to the economic crisis brought on by the COVID-19 pandemic. This idea that we've had where we've seen tourism segmented away from our businesses on a national basis, but deep inside, the two are fully already integrated. We need to take greater advantage of that. So my government is providing several incentives in the short term. Um, in terms of job stimulation. Uh, we were very lucky that we have several major capital projects, the airport project, uh, hospital, police headquarters, road redevelopments, water projects that are doing. we're doing. We're putting an incentive where uh, a contractor can buy five lots. Um, we're allowing them to get all of their products duty free and also a tax holiday um, to get people to agree to build five homes at the same time. This way we can start going after some of the smaller businesses. The SMMEs, money is going into the St. Lucia Development Bank from the EU, as well as looking to see if we can reduce taxes um, and cost to the banks specifically to be lending money to the SMMEs, because this is really where the future is. But the SMMEs themselves must recognize that we can focus on the local market for the sh very short term, but they themselves are going to have to start looking more broadly uh, competing on a global basis. That was Prime Minister of St. Lucia, the Honorable Alan Chastney. The Department of Health and Wellness continues to play an integral role in protecting the well-being of our citizens. One of the key actions taken at the commencement of in-country cases of COVID-19 was the closure of our national borders to routine travel. The Department of Health and Wellness, however, has executed discretion to grant permission for the repatriation of 795 St. Lucia nationals who were faced with challenges presented by the COVID-19 pandemic due to global travel restrictions.
In addition, in keeping with statutory instrument number 63 of 2020, the Office of the Chief Medical Officer approved 882 applications for entry, which were granted for medical reasons, including return to country following surgery, death in families, and the return of students, as well as to provide urgent support needed in country. 50 applications were approved in March. 28 in April, 450 in May, and thus far for the month of June, 354 applications have been approved. The arrival of these individuals is permitted through the written authorization by the Chief Medical Officer. The department has also taken steps to facilitate the option of home quarantine in situations where individuals have health complications, small children, are unable to function independently and other sensitive situations. The applicants for this discretionary accommodation must meet the necessary requirements, including inspection of homes by health officials, prior to approval. The Department of Health and Wellness is sparing no effort to ensure that at every juncture there is consultation with all involved and that the established protocols serve as an added layer of protection for all concerned. Government will soon formally launch St. Lucia's Economic Recovery and Resilience Plan designed to stimulate overall economic activity. The plan is born out of an aggressive and engaging multifaceted stakeholder process encompassing public and private participation, including representation from trade unions. Glenn Simon tells us more. For the past two months, government officials have been working assiduously on the Economic Recovery and Resilience Plan for St. Lucia, with a focus on stimulating all aspects of the economy. Government employed a three-phased approach to addressing the COVID-19 situation, which initially included managing the healthcare component. This involved an increase in the number of healthcare personnel and personal protective equipment, establishment of isolation and quarantine centers, not forgetting local testing capacity for COVID-19. Acting Permanent Secretary and Director of Finance, Esther Rigobert, stated that the Economic Recovery and Resilience Plan aims to bring about hope and instill confidence at the household and business level. The second phase of the plan focuses on bringing support to the most vulnerable and persons directly impacted by COVID-19, such as those in tourism, agriculture and tourism sectors. Many persons were directly impacted. They lost their income, their jobs, and they, there was a sense of fear and uncertainty looming over St. Lucia. So the second phase would be to bring immediate support and some of the measures announced in the social stabilization plan covered areas such as income support, a feeding program, and ensuring persons who, who are out of work for that support are to at least keep going. Under phase three, um, the focus was on recovery and resilience. Recovery in terms of allowing persons who have either lost their jobs, source of income, or they need support to restart their business to get that support either from the government or private sector and financial institutions. Over 30 agencies, including the Chamber of Commerce, banks and credit unions were engaged for their feedback, support and contributions in the formation of the Economic Recovery and Resilience Plan. Chief Economist in the Department of Finance, Janai Leos, said though the plan takes into account short, medium and long-term initiatives, Emphasis will be placed on the immediate to short-term gains over the next six months. Some of the issues in the discussion or the discussions have been how can we reposition the economy, how can we diversify the society and so forth. We also had discussions on food security, agro-processing and also lending to, to SMEs. So cognizant of those, the plan is going to have some of those elements in there. So persons would hear or see part of government's plan towards incentivizing the offering of financial support to SMEs and to also repurpose some of our, our donor funds towards stimulating agro-processing and also stimulating the adoption of digital technologies. Executive Director for the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, Fiona Hingson, explained that the planning process was heavily stakeholder-driven and inclusive with line ministries engaging various stakeholders, such as the Chamber of Commerce, manufacturers, and other business associations. And internally, we met as a government to discuss the various proposals that we um, got from the various business associations, to discuss them, assess them, to see how government can give, um, put together an, an appropriate response to the needs of the citizenry. 
She added that the government also established a multi-sectoral committee comprising over 30 stakeholders from the public and private sectors, including representatives from the employers and trade unions. Guided by a framework, the committee made recommendations to government on actions to help the economy recover within the immediate to short term. The framework basically speaks to economic recovery and economic resilience pillars because we felt it was necessary not only to look at recovering the economy but to also as well build in resilience in order to protect us from future events like what we went through. So for the economic recovery we spoke to the fiscal stimulus that would assist in stimulating the economy. Secondly, the fast track shovel ready project that would help to build economic activity, provide jobs for persons who are displaced. And so for the resilience pillars, we have four resilience pillars that spoke to strengthening the product productive sectors, strengthening social protection system, health outcomes, as well as disaster risk mitigation. The permanent secretary in the Department of Finance says the economic recovery and resilience plan will touch every facet of the economy. So there's a bit for each sector. There's a little for the household, some for small businesses, some for property owners. So once it's launched, I'm sure you will get all the necessary detail. But it's to bring about and instill hope, confidence that we can come out of this crisis I'm a stronger people, a stronger nation. For the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, Glenn Simon reporting. Testing results for COVID-19 received on June 18, 2020, indicated 45 negative test results. A total of 1,484 tests have been carried out to date, and the recorded number of confirmed cases remains at 19. 18 of those cases have fully recovered. Cognizant of the strain and stress that the pandemic can bear, Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar-George is encouraging St. Lucians to seek help if they feel overwhelmed. The mental health impact of COVID-19 has been well documented. It ranges from anxiety, depression, to suicidal ideation. All age groups are affected as life changes have been drastic in many cases. The new reality of working from home, less social contact with family and friends, homeschooling for children, and being unemployed is actually diff a difficult time for most persons. Persons are encouraged to seek help at the National Mental Wellness Center, the 201 helpline, or from trusted family members and friends if needed. We advise that parents monitor and manage children who may be trying to cope as well. Also, persons should try to provide support to family and friends who may not be managing well to the COVID-19 environment. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar-George. Several entities partner to help bolster St. Lucia's resilience to natural disasters. Anisia Antoine has the details. With the hurricane season forecast to become more severe each year, it is paramount that St. Lucia takes the necessary steps to mitigate and build resilience against natural disasters such as hydrometeorological events, pandemics and droughts. In that vein, the National Emergency Organization, NEMO, has partnered with the Disaster Vulnerability Reduction Project to improve water storage capacity. In excess of 300 tanks will be distributed to a number of its affiliated agencies, organizations and individuals. Doreen Gustav, director of NEMO, stated that the need for more effective water storage is even more crucial during this period. Most of the water tanks will be installed at buildings such as churches and human resource development centers that are used as shelters. And agencies such, such as the National Council for Persons with Disability, the Blind Welfare Association, and councils for, Council for Older Persons will ensure that the members who are most in need receive these tanks. The need for effective water storage to combat the impacts of drought and other extreme weather events was occasioned by St. Lucia's declaration of a water emergency on May 18, 2020. These newly procured tanks will go a long way in strengthening the resilience of the recipient communities, agencies, and individuals. 
The Ministry of Economic Development, Housing, Urban Renewal, Transport and Civil Aviation and NEMO have signed a tripartite agreement to ensure that tanks are used for the purpose intended. Minister for Economic Development, Housing, Urban Renewal, Transport and Civil Aviation, Honorable Guy Joseph, expressed gratitude to the World Bank for its support. Given the, the COVID situation, we triggered the emergency part of this um, fund and we were able to go into direct contracting. And I have to compliment Bryce and company. Over the years, we've had to order water tanks every time we need them out of St. Lucia, and it is quite bulky, and, and it drives the cost upward to be able to ship these water tanks from other islands to St. Lucia. And then they have to build them in different sizes so they can fit into one. When I looked at the technology being used by Bryce, it is one single tank, so everything is cast as a whole, so it becomes a stronger, more durable tongue that we have. With the low levels of water available and the vulnerability of Wasco's water system during this period, Minister Honorable Joseph also encouraged rainwater harvesting. Since the building of the Roseau Dam, almost every catchment area was abandoned. So those who are from the Wavin Poisson area would know Going to the Miami area, there, there was a water catchment area, but that was abandoned. Then we had the, the gravity flow from the millet intake, that was abandoned. Hill 20. But what has further compounded the situation for us in St. Lucia is that the water levels in these rivers have dropped so considerably that where you used to get a million gallons of flow a day, now you're getting under half a million flow. So, I am saying all of this to highlight the importance of rain water harvesting and storage of water during the dry season. The handing over ceremony of the water storage tanks took place on Friday, June 19, 2020 at the Financial Administrative Centre. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle of We All. Coronavirus? I am worried, Gasa. It's only old people dying from that. Hold up. Being young does not mean being safe. Yes, it's true that the elderly are at higher risk, but anyone can get the virus. The effect is even worse if you have a chronic condition like hypertension, heart disease, lung disease, and diabetes, or weakness in your immune system. If you are living with these conditions, be extra careful. Wash your hands with soap and water. Use hand sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol when hand washing is not possible. Avoid touching your face. Take steps to boost your immunity through proper nutrition, exercise, rest, and take your medication as prescribed. Limit being around people who have flu symptoms, even close family members. Our health is in our hands. Together, through simple actions, we can stop the spread of coronavirus. This message was brought to you by the Bureau of Health Education of the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Monsieur Tajanel, Monsieur Madame Department of Responsibility for Information and Government Service, GIS, Television National, PIA, NTN, Capuzato Nouvelle, Aquayol, Presato, Primus Hutchinson. Ce pays qui est blanc, qui est continu, pour espionner yon grand quantité la poussière sorti à Desert Sahara, en Afrique. Selon rapport sorti bureau météorologie cette fois-ci, ça a occasionné problème de visibilité. Ça veut dire la poussière ça là, qui réduit à ce degré habilité monde pour une bonne vision à une distance. La poussière sorti à Desert Sahara, c'est un mélange de sable et la poussière, et ça a formé règlement de mon temps présent. Avant que la poussière soit en pile force, la poussière soit en pile force, la direction de la mer et le pays qui est en même route que la poussière. Le satellite NASA a observé la poussière 
C'était le 13 à mois de juin. Et tapou le 18 juin, il était déjà arrivé à ce pays en tiers là. La poussière ça là, ça portait un danger parce que et quand elle cause moins clarté et ces miettes ça ça là, ça contrôle la situation monde qui a souffert puis étouffement et l'autre maladie de respiration. Mais aussi ça a une cause moins activité cyclone et porter un so, porter un soleil couchant qui est très belle et puis plusieurs couleurs. Selon les scientifiques NASA, la poussière Sahara a aussi aidé pour bâtir mer bord de la mer et a permis plus de nourriture existence en terre. Comme des habitudes, toutes les années, le gouvernement a poussé des millions à ce sable en la mer Atlantique là, et ce pays l'île de vent constate ici qu'il y a cette situation. Le bureau météorologique cette ci a conseillé pour petit bateau et pour les gens qui ont l'habitude de la mer pour prendre une bonne précaution. Parce que la mer est brutale, le vent est fort et il n'y a pas de clé à la mer. Bon lundi, bon matin, presque tout ce monde est venu à la paix, a été couvert et puis blanchi en cause du sable Sahara. Autorité de ménagement Zordi, en cette ici, a informé tous les résidents du service pour un marché Zordi déjà vu et normal, comme la coutume, et commencé lundi le 22 juin. Ce service là a évolué, suivre l'opération et normalement dans ces diverses communes et villages, villes et villages pays. À Castri, toute paresse qui a trouvé le service là lundi et aussi vendredi. Toute paresse qui a reçu le service le mardi a aussi trouvé le service là le samedi. Les résidents et les institutions du gouvernement à Ville Castri et ce business là aussi a reçu le service le lundi, mercredi et samedi. Un village là où il y a un service le service mercredi et il y a aussi Pakistan, Gaïwa, Monleza et Tetmon. Choisez, choisez le mercredi et ça c'est un monde la croix. Autorité a avoué que, il y a un peu de vrai que tout le monde s'est laissé. Là, il y a un pile à ces ordres là qui a pris plus l'air que les autres. Par exemple, vieux stove, vieux TV et l'autre comme ça qui a semblé au résultat de service là, qui était baissé à son opération. Alors, par conséquence de ça, commencé en mois de juillet 2020, le a établi un service à la grande mode pour un masse d'ordi. Pour les autres, ces résidents ont aussi trouvé permission pour s'aller plus que des articles d'ordi d'Europe de pour trouver un masse. L'autorité a pour tuer les résidents et puis plus d'informations, et bien, il pour tuer et puis plus d'informations en ces semaines qui sont venues. Facilité pour amasser les ordres qui continuent pour opérer, commencer depuis 8 h bon matin pour jusqu'à 4 h après-midi, lundi pour samedi, 8 h pour midi à son holiday, mais qui reste fermé le dimanche. Les autorités de ménagement des ordres de cette ci car vous remerciez le public là pour passer sur vous, pour te coopérer devant le temps avec ça là, tu en place. Plus bon air en mois de juin. Il y a un groupe musicien en collaboration avec l'industrie musique pays qui a organisé avec Chen. Il y a un concept de bénéfices. Il y nous faisons ensemble musique pour la vie. Le spectacle a été paru face à la public à la télévision Calabash. L'activité a été pour assister les musiciens de la Avant, les artistes qui performaient, c'était Tedison John, Keo, Meshak, Invader, Rashad et Pamelot. Comme un business, les individus et les gens qui ont la musique, ils ont tous assisté pour supporter les musiciens qui sont affectés par la maladie de Corona. La principale raison pour te chaîne spectacle, c'était pour établir une façon de se pour la industrie et aussi pour sa plus indépendance. Directeur exécutif pour la Fondation de Développement Culturel, CDF, Mme Ramona Henry, applaudit le succès de l'initiative en bas de la situation économique du pays récemment. L'ambassade des bandes musiciens, c'est ici, Tedison John, a défriché le concept de la Coyonne qui venait à l'air et a ajouté que depuis la maladie de la corona, il y a plusieurs activités en face de la musique. Tedison a déclaré que la pandémie a affecté les musiciens fort tout bonnement. Comme toute activité qu'on fait de la musique, ni en cette ici et au pays international, ni pour faire. Alors, il était très apprécié l'activité des bénéfices. Il y a plusieurs bénéfices et des agences. Il y a plusieurs business et agences qui supportent. C'était CDF, Banque de cette ici, Marcy, Lucilec, Export, c'est de l'ouche, à même plusieurs les autres. Et c'est comme ça. Nous, 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 nous
mon cas, monsieur, autant pour garder, mon cas, une invitation pour je ne puis moins considérer qu'on se veut la vie, n'a pas cette autre nouvelle. Ah, quoi, on a pris ça, c'est le moins vieux pour cette autre général. Merci, Apple Primus. And that brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.